Welcome back to Mysticast. I'm your host, Adam Pfeiffer, and I'd like to thank you for tuning in to our 51st episode. We have some great content for you today, so sit back, relax, and enjoy. For the last two years, participants have gathered at Huff Hills for a very interesting event. Our own Scott Mann has more on the story. Not just people were planning on hitting the slopes at Huff Hills on Saturday. The second annual dummy race had many creative creatures flying down the hills for a fun time and for a good cause. Chris Erickson tells us more. Uh, the dummy race is just a way for uh, people to get together, kind of unconventional outdoor sport or activity down at Huff Hills. And at its basis, it's kind of just a community event that we use to raise money for scholarships. Throughout the event, there were a lot of laughs and everyone was having an awesome time. It, it was pretty fun. It was pretty fun. Um, my feet are a little cold. Getting back down the hill, uh, I slipped, so my, uh, my back end is wet and it, it's interesting. The dummy race helped raise money for the Erickson Merkel Foundation, and it was no surprise that it was a success again in its second year. And our foundation exists to uh, uh, raise money for scholarships for hardworking students, and so the dummy race was a way of just building a community event to that effect. And just, you know, it's unexpectedly fun, like everybody cheers for everybody else's dummy, and you see kind of what happens to them as they go down the hill. For Mystic Media, I'm Scott Mann. If you want to donate to the cause, visit ericksonmerkel.org. You may remember a certain troublesome young man that was featured on a previous episode of Mysticast. Now we have the whole picture, and it's not pretty. I am happy to inform you that our testing on Mr. Pfeiffer is going well. I, I see Professor Watts everywhere I go, or at least someone who looks like him. I, I, someone is following me. I know it. I know it. Needless to say that our monitoring of Mr. Pfeiffer and his recovery has been as constant and discreet as possible, but there were some unforeseen mistakes. What the heck? Hey! Hey! Come out. Where are you? I, I think he's inside my head. He's just in there, just picking away at my brain. It's like he doesn't leave even in my dreams. I, I see him, but he's just out of sight. He's just around the corner every time I see him. Constant surveillance is of the utmost importance in my treatment program. It always works. Tell me what to do, what to think. Someone help me, please. I can't, I can't deal with this. Please, someone help me. That's right, Mr. Pfeiffer. I am here to cure you. As am I, Mr. Pfeiffer. We are We're all here, here to, cure to cure you, Mr. Pfeiffer. Pfeiffer. Have, Have no, no fear. fear. Oh, there God! This can't be happening! You're not real! Get away from me! Get away from me! No, please. Leave me alone. I am afraid that it is all too real, Mr. Pfeiffer. <laughs> you are of a certain interest to the Bureau. <laughs> what Bureau, you barmy old godger? <laughs> you psychopath! The Bureau for the Advancement of Board Quality Skits. <laughs> we are happy to inform you that Mr. Pfeiffer is progressing along just fine in his treatment sessions. Do you have a special talent you'd like to showcase? Well, now you have the opportunity, right here on BSC's campus. Here's Tom Delosier with more. Wednesday, February 22nd was open mic night at the Student Union on the BSC campus. Here's a few segments of the live music that night. <laughs>
also on stage that night were a few members of the Bismarck State College Art Club. They were creating works of art while the live music was filling the air of the student union on the BSC campus. This event was sponsored by the Figments of Imagination yearly magazine, which the proceeds going to help to produce the magazine. And this year we are celebrating 25 years of Figments of Imagination. The next open mic night will be hosted on March 22nd. Up next, Cole Romine returns with a review of a few new tracks. So, today I'm going to be reviewing tracks. It's just something new I wanted to do, and let's, let's just get into it. Let's just talk about these three tracks that I've been listening to lately, and I want to give you my opinion. I may not always love you, but as long as there are stars, Above so the first track we got on this list is God Only Knows, and this was originally made by the Beach Boys, and this is basically a uh, cover that John Legend decided to do with Cynthia Irvo. I'm pretty sure that's how you say her last name. Anyways, it's a duet version which goes back and forth between the two, and I really love that, and when they both come together and sing, awesome. Uh, also features piano and strings and I it makes it really soothing and it really it really makes it sound really intimate when you're listening to it and it's probably one of the better covers I've heard so I definitely recommend you listen to it it's definitely a five out of five for me look you kids with your vintage music coming through Santa. The next song we got is Lana Del Rey's Love. Now to me this is just a typical Lana Del Rey song, but I feel like it's more refined than her other stuff. And it is a little blandish on the lyrical content, even though there is some nice lines in there. They like the line, you're part of the past, no, you're the future, which is a really good line. The song is basically diving into a love life. And it feels like it's more just anyone, really. I don't know if it's really about her or whatnot, but it sounds like it's kind of a grasp of that concept. I do feel over time this song is going to grow on me. It does have that usual noir kind of feel to it and like melodramaticness that Lana Del Rey is known for, but I feel like this is just a more refined version of that. And I. I like it. It's simple, but it's good. I give it a 4 out of 5. Now we got Calvin Harris's Slide. Features Frank Ocean and Migos, which is actually really cool. I was like, Frank Ocean? Yeah. And this is probably Calvin Harris's best work since I created Disco, which was his best album that he's ever done <laughs> and uh, I just really like the collaboration here it works really well I do have to say the instrumental is a little bland but it works for the most part because Frank Ocean and Migos really carry the weight in this track I feel like the instrumental works with that but overall I do like this song and I feel like it's gonna really become something that's gonna be played in the summertime especially I'd give it a three out of five anyways I hope you enjoyed this quick video and I hope you enjoy these songs. What are some new songs that you guys like? Just let me know. Go on my YouTube channel and check it out. I hope you enjoyed this video, and peace. You can find more of Cole's reviews at facebook.com slash tobehonestmusicreviews. Do It Yourself has become a pillar of the music scene all across the globe. We explored the effect it's had on our local music community. Music is a key part of most everyone's daily life. For some, this passion extends even further. I spoke to Richard Lowen about the challenges and rewards of do-it-yourself venues. You know, people don't really get the amount of work that goes in, you know, the day of and the day before to, to be prepared for it. And I thought we were unprepared for our first show, but in all reality, you know, most shows feel similar. You feel like you're always have a couple of ridiculous small things that you wouldn't think of that you have to get done in order to make things continue to go smoothly. He also spoke about bridging the age gap to make shows more accessible to everyone. You know, exciting to, um, to younger people as well as uh, a place where adults feel comfortable, honestly. I also spoke to Nick Jensen, the owner of the Alco, about how the space came to be. 
we needed a place to practice and we moved in here and we thought, well, we should start putting shows. We got the room, got some of the equipment, so we picked up some new speakers and went from there. I've always wanted to. He spoke about past shows and the increasing turnout. And then the first official show was on January 24th, I think it was. 23rd. It was the 23rd. And we played that one and who else played that one? Uh, Classic and uh, Andrew Larrabee. And we had a really good turnout for that one. And uh, then the last one was uh, the one on Friday, which is February 24th. We had a really good turnout for that one. So I'm hoping that this, the trend is going to continue, but uh, see how it goes. I'm Dylan Bender, reporting for Mysticast. The next Alcove show will be on March 13th. The Mysticast crew got together to decide what was the best burger in Bismarck. Here's the result. Welcome to the Best Burger Challenge. We picked five restaurants in the Bismarck area. Our goal was to see who had the best burger in the city of Bismarck. The five restaurants we chose was Sickies, JL Beers, Broadway Grill, Five Guys Burgers, and Woodhouse Restaurant. We have four members of our Mysticast staff be the judge and taste who had the best burger of the five in Bismarck. And here are our four judges for the best burger in Bismarck. From left to right, we have Adam, Dylan, Scott, and Riley. And our first judge is Scott, and he looks hungry. We'll get started with burger number one. Our second judge is Dylan, and he also looks hungry. It's okay. The meat was kind of kind of mushy. I don't know. Our next judge is Riley. He looks determined and hungry. Yeah, that was good. Our final judge of the day is Adam, and he looks like he could tear up some burgers. Let's see. Last one here. I like the cheese on that one. It's just enough cheese on it to make it good. So after eating all five burgers, the judge got together and decided and talked about which ones they thought were the best burgers. So as the judges get together and talk, who will it be? Will it be Sickies, Broadway Grill, Woodhouse Restaurant, JL Beers, or Five Guys? We're waiting to find out. After debating between the judges, now we're ready to reveal who was the winner of the best burger of the five in Bismarck. The result, we have time between two and three. Five Guys, Burgers, and Broadway Grill. Wow, how about that? What a surprise. It was a tie. So congratulations to Five Guys and Broadway Grill for having the best burgers in Bismarck of the five restaurants we chose. I want to say thank you to our four judges who sacrificed and ate those delicious burgers. And for Mr. Cass, this is Tom Delosier. That's our last story for today. Thanks for watching, and be sure to tune in to BSC's The Mix, and keep an eye out for the next episode of Mysticast at bscmysticmedia.com.